Piers, um, it's January the 2nd, we're at the Alexandra pub in Wimbledon, UK. I'm with Piers uh, Corbyn and um, we're having a discussion about um, climate change. So, Piers, what's wrong with anthropogenic climate change or man-made global warming? Well, it's wrong on three basic counts. First of all, the, the actual data, a million years of data from ice cores and sediments show that carbon dioxide levels on the world follow world temperatures. They don't lead them, so the temperatures are dictating it. And they, carbon dioxide follows world temperatures by some hundreds of years. Um, that's just as a fact, therefore the supposition of the theory that CO2 is controlling temperatures is incorrect. It's not borne out by any observations whatsoever. If you so look, there are no papers? No, there's no, no there's you're nothing. saying there's no evidence? There's no evidence, no, no peer-reviewed no, no, papers? There's not a single peer-reviewed piece of paper which says that carbon dioxide controls temperatures. What they have is a theory that it ought to do, but when you look at actual graphs even over the last hundred years, temperatures in America or the world <coughs> oscillate wildly whereas carbon dioxide levels have just gone up continuously. So half the time they've been moving in the same direction, half the time opposite directions. So the idea that CO2 is in control is complete, utter nonsense made up by interest groups. And if you look at the IPCC, that's the UN Commission on the matter, they, their recent reports don't talk about temperatures and CO2 at the same time. They assume CO2 is bad and then show that CO2 is going up and therefore action has to be taken. They have no scientific evidence whatsoever to support their hypothesis. Right. The second reason why it's nonsense is that even if you were to accept that CO2 is controlling temperatures, then you've got to argue that if man's in charge, man's CO2 has to somehow dominate the rest of the CO2 of the world. Everyone accepts in the field that the flux of CO2 in and out of the uh, sea uh, and the land is, is much bigger than man's contribution, i.e. the natural phenomena uh, is, is uh, huge compared with man's contribution. So man's contribution to the flux of CO2 in and out of the biosphere is 4%, just 4%. So 96% of it is not in man's control. So the idea that man's 4% can control the other 96% is insane. It's a conspiracy theory of nature of the most absurd proportion. Um, for example, termites produce 10 times man's CO2. If those are a problem, then we need to have war on termites. Um, and I don't believe termites are following mankind in any way whatsoever, but the theory that we're told requires it. The third thing to make clinch it all, if you like, is that the sea rules. 70% of the globe is covered in water. All liquids next to a gas have a dynamic interaction with the gas and there's a, uh, the amount of gas in, in the air or in the sea is in a dynamic equilibrium controlled by the temperature. It's, the process is called Henry's Law, but it's obvious that's what happens if you warm a bottle of pop, CO2 will come off. If you cool it down, it can keep more CO2. The sea holds 50 times more carbon dioxide than the air. When the sea is warmed up by, for example, solar activity, then it will release more CO2. It takes time to come out because of the complicated currents of the ocean and time to go in as well and so, and so forth. But basically, the 100-year year lag is to do with the fact that it takes uh, easily 100 years for water to circulate, say, from Greenland under, under the sea and so on and out again in the Pacific and so forth. So that explains the lag. And there's no explanation whatsoever in terms of uh, carbon dioxide uh, uh, as to how the sea, sea works. The carbon dioxide has to be controlled by the sea surface temperatures. And if man produces extra CO2, it just goes into the sea. Sounds pretty clear then. Well, it is. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, do you, um, do you want to talk about the... Um, where we are, um, okay. especially relating to, I don't know whether you want to get into things like um, 
Agenda 2021 or exactly what, why is academia so obsessively controlled to the point where most of the, most of the top scientists who concur with your theory are retired? Yeah. And that's the truth, isn't it? Yeah. Or is it the truth? Yeah. Well, is there a new generation of, of climatologists and physicists who would agree with you? Oh, well, there are, but they funded? keep they shut up. You see, I said to the top, I'm a, as you know, former graduate of Imperial College, did very well in, in, in there doing physics and was president of the student mm-hmm. union. So I go back there from time to time. And, and they don't mind me calling conferences there, even though I've said, look, you guys don't agree with this. Do you mind? I said, no, it's OK. This is a business matter. You can you can call conference. But I said to one of the tops in, in, in Peril, I said, look, you know it's wrong. We all know it's wrong. Um, why don't you jump ship now? And then you'll get the best students in the world will come to Imperial. You've got to get ahead of the game and then you'll win. And he looked at me as if, well, maybe this is true. Oh, well, well I don't, that's the way I interpreted it. Well, he could look. be thinking you don't understand the pressures. What he said under. was, he <laughs> said, Piers, Imperial is always ahead of the game. It's oh, okay. interesting. Well, to me, the game is money. Right? Right. There's yeah. massive amounts of money spent on so-called climate change saving the planet nonsense. Um, it's uh, used to produce wind farms, all sorts of alternative energies, all of which are very expensive, mm. and they are a reason, an excuse for maintaining oil price. Oil and coal are the main sources of energy around the world. Uh, only 2% of world energy is produced by so-called alternative means. But in order to produce it, it you have to maintain oil price. The oil companies say that they support um, action against man-made climate change and so long as there is a uniform price for carbon across the board. Now that means that when a farmer has to be paid more to produce maize to be burnt as opposed to be eaten, then the rest of the oil price has to be held up. So OPEC has to hold up oil price And that basically means that the oil companies double their profits. They lose maybe 2% of the world uh, um, consumption of of coal and oil, but they double the profits on the rest. So it's a no-brainer. They're going to go along with the story, whatever. And I'll give you a little example of what happened in 2004. I was invited to the Global Oil Summit in Houston, Texas. And I wasn't quite sure why I was invited there, but they wanted me to talk about <coughs> solar activity and how it's affecting climate. So I gave this talk. And it was a, I was quite impressed by, I thought it was a bit of a small meeting and I realized who the hell was there. Now all the tops of all the oil companies were there. Um, Andre Lyanov, Putin's chief scientific advisor was there. I mean, all these people were there. So I gave the talk, and just when I'm getting down from the table, just got down, this guy walks up to me, and he flicks through a big stack of graphs. <laughs> and he says, Piers, I just want to show you that we're on to this. I said, oh, that's great. Yeah, and I looked at the graphs, and some of them were the same sort of things I was talking about, about solar activity and climate. And I said, oh, so why do you want me here then? He said, ah, well, we just want to know from a physicist in the field what is really going on and if what we're on the right track. I said, oh, yeah, okay, that's nice. And who are you? He said, ah, well, I'm retiring at this meeting, but I am the chief executive of, and he gave the name of one of the biggest oil companies in the world. Right, right. Fine, okay. Three months later, or actually a month later, some friends of mine said, well, why don't you ask those guys for money? So I said, yeah, but I, just, I don't want to get mixed up with oil companies. They said, look, we'll have a game, right? We'll ask the UN for money, and we'll ask these guys for money. Equal money from each side. Let's have a go. Okay. So we asked them, and the message came back pretty quickly. We're very interested in what Mr. Corbyn has to say, but we don't want to give him any money because that would upset the Green Lobby. Mm. So they decided in 2004, one, what was true, 
to how to make money and they're different things and it stayed like that ever since and just look at the facts the biggest um, climate change so-called or global warming promoters on the planet all the mass media all the state mass media Al Jazeera that is the biggest one who owns Al Jazeera Qatar Qatar is an oil state look if oil states were backing me, I don't see anything of it. They are 100% backing the opposition to anybody speaking the truth about climate. Well, you know, it's interesting that, that a lot of people will, you, will argue that they're the ones who held back coal fusion. And there's a lot of belief in that. Because, they may have. They and, may have. Um, but, the, but let's look at the support, the let's call them the globalists have given to in silicon valley to elon musk and to the electric vehicles they've really done everything to help him be successful haven't they and the, the car and my son maybe says, my son says to me well yes they have but well, okay, carry on that, so my son says to me dad you let's just say for a minute that it might be right what you're saying that it's all nonsense Surely the, what's happened is good. The, the progress of batteries and electric vehicles. Now I know hopefully you're going to tell me in a minute why that's not as, as, as true as it's true. Not true as, no. So, but that's what he says to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, so what, how would you respond? Well, it's a brainwashing agenda. It's uh, fake news and uh, fake science, essentially. Look, batteries can be made, batteries can be made better. But the storage of energy in batteries is very expensive. Um, to produce a battery is hugely energy uh, um, uh, consuming and uh, to produce one of those electric cars requires producing a battery weighing half a ton. The CO2 produced in that production is equivalent to driving a normal petrol car for eight years. So this Technology is not reducing CO2 at all. It's increasing CO2 production for transport. It's a complete con. And it's a pyramid of gains because what will happen is, because the price of producing these cars is so expensive, um, it only works when people are crazed to buy the shares. And they're buying the shares as a pyramid game and it will collapse. Now, I've spoken to people who are very well informed and I said look this this pyramid's going to collapse isn't it and they said well yes Piers yes it is but but it, it won't look like that I said what will happen they said oh they're just going to turn over the making of the cars into making of batteries and go on promoting the making of batteries because people need more batteries and trying to make batteries more efficient I said oh I see well that makes sense but of course there's a there's a limit to how efficient batteries can be. And we didn't really carry the discussion much on, but that is a problem. It's 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 extremely inefficient way of, of well, it, all right, you, if you're gonna store energy, it's a way of doing it, but you lose a lot. You yeah. lose a lot by doing it. Yeah. And, you know, you, if you know from the so-called maximum power theorem of, of any battery, that if you wanna give a lot of energy out quickly, then you can get the energy, it delivers the maximum power when the out, uh, external resistance is equal to the internal resistance of the battery. That means that it's only going to produce 50% of the energy in it. The rest is going to produce as heat. So it's mm. inefficient. If you mm. want to use them for big power production, it's inefficient. Mm. It's a stupid thing to do. That's like, oh, oh, oh. But connect, connect, pumping yeah. water up a hill and putting right. it down again is, right. is more efficient. But of course, building those type of things is very expensive. Right. But on, on, a, on a side <laughs> tangent, if it turns out that the LENR the L -E -N -R developments, of which there are many, do realize commercial products, I'm particularly interested in the Tesla power wall. Have yeah, you yeah, seen yeah. that? It's a beautiful device. Sits on the wall of your garage inside, mm -hmm. and right now it's basically batteries. Mm -hmm. But you could easily see Tesla partnering with Andrea Russell sure, sure, yeah, and yeah. putting uh, the QX in, and I'm hoping that's going to happen. All right, I'm no. going to. I'm going okay. to stop. I'm gonna stop.